Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to talk about managers, controllers, and systems. We're going to go over what they are, what these terms mean in game development, and how you should or should not use them. Let's start with the manager. The key thing that managers tend to do is provide a way to interact with a collection of objects. So if you think of a entity manager or you know a spawn manager or an enemy manager or rocket manager whatever the hell it is it's gonna have a collection of different types of things or usually it's a collection of a bunch of one type of thing an NPC manager for example may have a method to get all of the NPCs within a specific range so this manager is keeping track of the NPCs. When we add or create new NPCs, they're going right into it. And when we remove them, they're coming out of it. And it knows their position, maybe a little bit of information about them, and we can use it just to find the correct NPCs or to kill off an NPC. You know, maybe we have a process that need, something needs to happen when NPCs die. The NPC can die, tell its manager that it's going, going away. That manager can then kick it back into a pool it can handle any cleanup that needs to be done, send off any events or messages that need to be known about in other systems, and kind of wrap things up nice and cleanly. It also gives us an easy, kind of shared common way to find or get these en entities. For instance, if we want to have a player manager to get players, it's a whole lot better than having a bunch of player game objects just sitting in the scene and then trying to, in our other code, find the correct player. So I've talked a little bit about what managers do. Now I just want to talk about how they're generally created. Usually you'll see a manager as a singleton or just a single instance of it in a scene or loaded at a time. So if we have an entity manager, we're not going to have multiple entity managers. We're probably going to start one up right at the beginning of our project and just leave it there. Now it may be a per scene style thing, perhaps we don't care about entities once the scene's gone, so we just create the entity manager it gets everything ready at the beginning, fills it up, and then gets destroyed and we get a new one. But you're never going to see, or at least not in a good system, a situation where you have multiple of the same type of manager just loaded up in the scene. Now, it's also important when you're creating these managers to make sure that they're not doing too much, that they're really just handling interactions with these objects or providing a way to interact with the objects to other classes. So they're giving you a way to find an NPC and do something to that NPC, or to launch a rocket or destroy a rocket or something like that. But there is this idea of creating a game manager that just runs the entire game flow. So this, this is kind of thing that has some setup in it. It runs kind of what's going on through the different stages of the game, when the player should transition to the next stage or when the level should switch. And this doesn't really match up with all of the other manager stuff that I've talked about so far. But it's still a fine use for a manager naming system. It's just a totally different implementation. Now, I do want to talk a little bit more about these, though, because game managers tend to work great on smaller projects. If you have something like, for instance, the Balls game that I recreated recently, you could easily shove all of the data, all of the state, right into that game manager, have the whole flow be there, and have it totally make sense and be readable, extendable, and good to go. But imagine if you're diving into a slightly bigger project. Perhaps it's an MMO, or maybe it's, uh, think of your most advanced first-person shooter that you play. You know, think of like uh, Overwatch, I like to play that a lot. Overwatch with a game manager, like just thinking it through what does the game manager do it can't really do one thing there's just so much going on in, in a game like that or like i said in these even larger games think of a big rpg just about anything that's not a small mobile game think about what a game manager would have to do and if what it has to do is a whole ton of crap then you're really just kind of shoving your entire game into one class you're not really creating a manager so much as a big giant mess that's going to be a nightmare to deal with later. But what about controllers? What's a controller and how does that differ from a manager? Now, generally, controllers tend to be something that goes on a specific entity or game object. So this could be on an NPC, it could be on a ball that's just bouncing around in your game. 
It's just something that is there to orchestrate and control other components or kind of run that entire game object. Depending on the object, if it's small enough, your controller may be you know, controlling the entire object. You know, like if it's a simple, again, going back to that balls demo, if it's a ball, you could have a simple ball controller that just tells it to launch up in a direction, that's it. Now, sometimes the word controller just isn't added here as well. So if it's controlling a specific entity type, you know, like it's an NPC, you may just see NPC instead of NPC controller. Totally fine. Um, I tend to go back and forth on that depending on um, just how much state is in there. If there's not really much state, uh, it'll usually be something that's more of a controller for me. And then if it has a lot of state, I'll usually drop that word out. And this is just somewhat of a habit of my own. Um, and I don't think it really makes that much sense either. Let's go over a couple controller examples. So a big one that you'll see a lot is something like a player controller. And generally this isn't very well defined. It tends to read input, handle moving, sometimes handle shooting, handle all kinds of things. It's usually a slightly over encompassing term that doesn't really tell you what the thing is doing or what the script is doing. It just tells you, hey, this is doing player related stuff. I Ideally, I like to have smaller controllers, things like a navigation controller that's just responsible for figuring out where this thing wants to go and how it wants to get there. And it could be doing something as simple as tying into a nav mesh agent, calculating out a path, and then setting that path. Or an animation controller that handles changing to different animation states, maybe send some information into the mechanism system to control blends or transition switches or anything like that. Um, going a little bit deeper, if I'm building a game with lots of stats in it, so maybe, for instance, just thinking of a real project, an MMORPG, it's got you know strength, health, intelligence, resist, all that kind of stuff. I'd like to have a stats controller there that's just responsible for that stats thing. And then this this helps because I can segment the stuff off, get, get a nice small class that's just responsible for stats, and I can also reuse that across other things. So if I want to have you know, an object that has stats on it that's maybe not a player or not an NPC, I can just drop that stats controller onto there, and if I've coded it up you know, and abstracted it away enough, it should just kind of fit on there and work with very minor revision or very minor external work. I shouldn't have to do much to make it just work with anything. One other really common type of controller is the input controller. And it's just responsible for reading input for a specific player. This could be on an entity, it could be on multiple entities, and each one of those would be responsible for reading input from a different player ideally. So it'd have like a player set up with a player, maybe a player controller on it, probably not, but definitely with an input controller on there. And then that would be responsible for reading input from that player, probably through an input system, and then passing that information on to the rest of the entity, so onto the player. So it goes something like, I've got a player, I've got a input controller, and maybe I've got a navigation controller. The Input controller is feeding in input to the player, which is then sending that back out to things like that navigation controller, maybe an attack controller or an ability or spell controller that's handling when I cast spells. So they're not really tightly coupled, which is what I want to go for. I want to keep these nice, small, and separated, but they all can kind of tie in and work well together so I can kind of mix and match the pieces that I need to build the functionality that we want to have. So what about the term system? What do you think of when, when we're building out a system in game? Now, when I sent out the poll, the results that I got were pretty interesting. And a lot of people just don't like using the term system at all. And I generally agree. Usually a system is more of a combination of controllers and managers and other code. And it's this whole idea and thought of bringing a thing together and creating this entire system. So for instance, if I've got an ability system in it, it may be built up of multiple different controllers and other classes that are all just kind of tying stuff together. And I don't really think of it as a single class. But there are some cases where I'll build a system class. Things like an input system. Think of, for instance, the uh, networking systems built into UNET. 
those are all named with system as well. But there is a system that's a little bit different that I think we should talk about briefly, which is something like the entity component system. Now the systems in there are designed to work on a set of data every frame and just keep updating it. So an example would be the movement system or the, what is it, the vector three movement system in ECS. It just takes in objects that have a vector three component on them and then moves them in whatever direction they're heading. I think it actually takes in ones that have a, a vector three, a heading and a speed all set and then it moves them along in that direction. Now those systems are cool and I think the ECS is very interesting but not really applicable to most day-to-day -day game development stuff that everybody watching this is doing. So if you're into ECS, it's awesome. I, I think it's pretty interesting stuff. But other than that, systems generally, again, tend to be more of a bigger abstract thing, not something that you'll see so much in code. And before I wrap this up, I just want to mention that when you're doing all this stuff, when you're creating these systems and controllers and managers and naming things, the most important part here is to just be really consistent. Keep your manager's name manager, controllers named something controller. Now, if you're building UI components, one of the things I like to do is add UI to the script. So start with UI right at the beginning. So it's very obvious that this is a UI script or you know, sometimes it'd be a UI controller. I don't know, it's still gonna have the UI in it. Just make sure that you keep your things named cleanly, nicely. It'll make it easier for you and for the other developers on your project. So that's all I've got for today. Hopefully this was kind of helpful. Um, if you have questions about managers, controllers, naming stuff, or any of that in general, or just want to leave some you know, feedback of your own, comments on things that you think are wrong here, or other suggestions that will make things better, please just drop a comment below. Other than that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff, and have a great day.